dark. This is the Maxim 400 SI, or Dynax 500 SI, depending on where you're from. The black plastic body and automation features are things we take for granted on cameras in the 21st century, but this plastic fantastic had it and more all the way back in 1994. This doesn't let me manually input the ISO, instead requiring DX coated film or it defaults to ISO 100. So in a ways it's like a point and shoot in the body of an interchangeable lens SLR. Even more so when I've equipped it with the Minolta Maxim AF 35-70mm f4 lens. It's kind of small for a constant aperture zoom lens, but f4 isn't all that fast at getting the sharpest image requires stopping down to at least f5.6. Those shots I took in the forest were unexposed at at least one or two stops according to the TTL metering. The Lomo 400 took on a gritty look. Some may not like it, but, uh, yeah. Some of the shadows took on a purplish hue, and some of the shadows ended up crushed in your black. Brighter parts of the sky can result in underexposure, and this with the camera's auto exposure. Hence the need for exposure compensation. Third to last and second to last photo here are among my favorites. Especially of the blue hour colors that aren't so blue and are quite saturated looking. Especially when compared to my Panasonic S5 Vlog footage with the Aces Transforms. Side note, I developed the film for six minutes in nearly eight month old Cinestell CS41 chemistry, agitating about once a minute. All things considering, I may have under-agitated and overdeveloped, and caused unnatural color shifts. If you saw my chemistry montage, you would have seen parts of the actual development process. Edited to music to make it look cool. Film photography isn't just art, it's fairly advanced chemistry as well, and well beyond my level of understanding. 